Hi people. Just had my uh, dogs run about a bit, just like in the in the video I had for a uh, few weeks ago. And uh, well, kind of c coffee time. And I noticed that uh, in um, well, I made a lot of videos uh, over the last couple of years, and quite often there is uh, some coffee featuring in there as well. But I've never ever told how I make my coffee and what kind of coffee it is. And so I thought, well, maybe it's a good, uh, good idea to show you exactly how I make coffee out in the wild. And this time, well, we are at, at the school. You see, there's a lot of snow all of a sudden, so I had to dig all this out. But uh, hey, I got a nice uh, campfire here, a nice camp kitchen, so I can show you how to make the coffee. Because I'm starting the fire from quite big blocks. They are pretty dry, but uh, it is a bit of a trick to get them to uh, to burn immediately. I know this violates a lot of bushcraft stuff, but uh, in itself it's bushcraft knowledge on how to do that. So you need a bit of uh, birch bark. So is this in shot? Yes. What I tend to do is I take the biggest ones, or really the thickest ones, and put them down beside one another so that you have a nice deep slit here in the middle. Almost, mostly really against one another. Then you take a bit of birch bark, fold it, because otherwise it will curl immediately. It will curl anyway. A trusty big lighter in this case. Feel free to make fire in a more primitive way, but now I want my coffee fast. And you put it in the mill there. Make sure that you have a nice bed. Of course, if you would be in the snow right now, you need a platform to build fire because see, there is so much snow and you don't want all the the moist from under it so take quite a lot of it no reason to be uh, to save it too much there's enough so And it has quite a lot of energy, so it will will be able to both evaporate evaporate the moist and get ignition temperature. Then you take a few that aren't so thick that have a nice bit of bark on it as well, like these. You put in diagonal or like in a, in an angle. Same here. But you put them quite close. You see that makes the flame very high. Then you take one more. This one you can take flat as well if it's more stable because it can be a bit unstable. And in this case it is. And if the flame isn't high something is wrong. It needs to be this high because that may, there is some sort of airflow going on here that makes it really hot. That's basically it. And what's even greater, you can immediately use it. 
Now I don't have water here, but I got tons of snow. So we'll take a bit of snow. And you really have to put a lot in because the volume of snow is about 10 times more than the volume of water. So we're going to have to add snow quite often to get a sizable cup of coffee, that is. So we put the lid on this and wait a while. So we are now about one minute further on and you see the snow is all already gone almost. See there is now a bit of water in there, it's hard to see. So yeah, we need more snow because I want more coffee than that. So basically, if you want one cup, you need ten cups of snow. And you see the fire is still going strong. And it's really hot because of this... Uh, it's, it's almost like a Vulcan stove, if you know what that is. But there is some a very special kind of airflow. And that will melt very fast. So in the meantime, the coffee you always see me using is, um, in Sweden they call that kukkaffe. It's, it's uh, translated it would be bo boil coffee, for boiling. And um, it's just normal coffee, but it does taste a bit different. And it is especially made for boiling it with the water. And uh, what it is, is very coarsely uh, grinded coffee, and I will show you in a minute. And also it is lightly roasted, not dark roasted. I think this will probably do for my coffee. So yeah, I tend to have it in this nice leather pouch, but I do always do a small plastic bag in there anyway because it uh, keeps it fresher and not so moist so let me show you the, the coffee, you see this is very coarse and quite light it smells really nice so that will be in there later. There are people who put that in from the very beginning. I am not one of those. Now I need to get a secret ingredient that I tend to have. The secret ingredient. This is a little bit of a pine branch. It has a little bit of the wood in there and the needles. In the, in the coffee actually I prefer spruce. But uh, there is no spruce, just her around, but this is very nice as well. And it's only a little bit, and I do cook it with the rest. So that is going to cook for a while. It's not boiling yet. But very soon, it will be. That makes it really bush coffee. Boiling nicely. And now this... Uh, Pine needles give off a lovely taste. So now it's time for the coffee. Now something this coffee is very known for is that when you put it in it will boil over. So you need to take that a bit carefully. Take it off the fire. So that it isn't boiling right now. And I tend to use like a hand and that would be three hands for a liter. I have about half a liter here so it will be one and a half hands. And I have to say I like my coffee strong even for European standards. So this is about a half. Now you don't put the lid on. You boil it up again and you keep a really good eye on it so that it doesn't boil over. I have about half the uh, the, the kettle full so it won't boil over so, so fast 
but already it's starting to boil. It's hard to see, I guess. You see that comes. So you don't want that to happen too often because then you will douse your fire. But uh, in this case, I wanted to demonstrate it a bit. But it is the, the typical thing for this coffee. Now, a lot of people say it will do that three times. Then it's good. What I tend to use is, well, I'm going to look at the, uh, at the, the bubbles from the boiling. And I've done that for years and years. And when the bubbles are all equal size, the coffee is ready. But they're all e unequal sizes. And as long as they're all unequal, it's not done. Yeah, that's good. So that means that the coffee is now boiled and it's done. It's good. A very important thing now is that this coffee is loose and you don't want to be eating coffee, you want to be drinking coffee and that's really really annoying. So what I always do is I put a little bit of uh, cold water in. Cold water in this and that will draw down all the, 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 uh, the, ca the coffee and, and, and it becomes a sediment on the bottom of the, of the kettle. I don't have water now, so I have to do with snow in this case as well. And, and because I, I usually would, would put in a bit like this, this. So yeah, I have to put a full cup of snow because it's one ten times more. And it will actually cool down the coffee to reasonable drinking temperature as well, but it is still very, very hot. Once the cold water is in, you don't stir it or anything. You just put it away from the, from the fire. Not very cold so that the whole coffee cools, but this is enough. Gives a bit of warmth and let it cool for two minutes. Now, a very important thing is that the very first drops are for our forefathers. And you know, that's a nice story. But of course, it is for cleaning out the spot. So when I'm pouring this now, it should be, you see, it's really clear. You don't see any coffee grind in there. And it's a really nice brownish color. And you keep the rest. You don't shake this too much, of course. And you keep the rest with the fire to keep it warm. And that's how it looks. And you see the fire is still going strong. See the interesting thing is this that in initially and it's still burning inside. It's quite a bit like the, the Swedish stove, the Swedish candle. So that's an interesting little technique to make a fire if you have bigger blocks. So well that's coffee, uh, bush coffee, Peter style. Try it, it's really nice and uh, also maybe uh, try the type of fire, that's also quite nice. It tastes fantastic both in winter and in summer and uh, don't forget the little bit of spruce or, or pine, that makes, gives a nice twist to it. So uh, enjoy your coffee and uh, see you in the next one. Peace!